see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is the story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. This is Court TV News on the Hour with Nifemi Oguntoye. Three days after a fighter jet on an operation against Boko Haram disappeared in the northeast, Nigeria Air Force authorities have ruled out sabotage. Chief of Air Staff Adishala Mosun dropped this hint to journalists on the sidelines of a meeting with President Goodluck Jonathan in Abuja. He however says the military has a fair idea of the whereabouts of the jet that went missing during an operation against the Boko Haram insurgents. Uh, one of our Alpha Jets uh, went on a routine uh, operational mission and they noticed uh, on the return uh, they lost contact with the control tower. Uh, that uh, made us to immediately initiate search. Um, the weather is not being healthy. Uh, uh, the citizens are very helpful. We're getting some good information, uh, but you know. Uh, in the aviation, uh, we have uh, uh, specific uh, information that we ought to have uh, to make the search easy. Uh, but the information we're getting from the citizens is uh, uh, good, but not sufficient, uh, good enough for us to pinpoint uh, the area of, uh, define the uh, area of search. Uh, but we have an idea of uh, where uh, the aircraft could be. Uh, don't forget, is the open Sahel. It looks, some people may think it's easy, uh, but in the open Sahel, uh, sometimes it's even very challenging. Uh, a human being standing uh, may look like a tree. Uh, and again, the area we're talking about is uh, we have operations going on there. Uh, you have limitations as to how low you can go uh, to conduct the search. Uh, but we have the uh, platforms. Uh, but I'm, so, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that uh, uh, before the end of the day, uh, before the end of the week, we should be able to uh, provide uh, positive information uh, as to the location uh, and then the pilots. Uh, but one thing is clear, uh, that whatever problem they had, uh, an ejection was uh, contemplated. Uh, it is my hope that the pilots are still alive. Do you suspect any sabotage or foul? Um, sabotage, no. Uh, because it's a distance of uh, uh, just uh, from Meiduguri uh, to Jola. Uh, we're in full control of the airspace. Uh, but don't forget when you lose radio, radio signal uh, becomes challenging. Uh, there are so many possibilities, uh, but we're working on it. Thank you, Thank you very much. Meanwhile, the African Center for Human Rights and Humanitarian Services has called on the federal government to take tougher action to arrest the Boko Haram insurgency in the northeastern region of the country. The center says the crisis had led to mass rural urban migration in the affected states. The body says many of the towns and villages in Bornu state have been deserted as insurgent attacks had left many fleeing into Maduguri with its attendant pressure on available infrastructure. The addressing, addressing journalists in Medigiri, chairman of the group, Sani Buba, lamented that recent happenings in the Northeast had aggravated human rights, abuses, mass poverty, starvation, uh, breakdown of unity among families, breakdown of law and order, extrajudicial killings and total displacement of families. Boba wondered why the committee set up by President Goodluck Jonathan that had so far collected over 60 billion naira on how to address terror activities in the region had yet to visit Bornu State, adding that many families have been uprooted from their homes. 
The defense authorities want Nigerians to show more support for troops engaged in the ongoing war against insurgents in the northeast. Minister of State for Defense Musili Obanikoro says at the launch of Support Our Troops Foundation in Abuja that the soldiers deserve appreciation. He maintained that words of solidarity and prayers in the social media would act as morale booster for troops as they confront insurgents on the battlefield. We all have a part to play. You say a word of appreciation to our troops today, you can say a word of prayer for them as well. You can help them with information, your expression of faith in their ability to defeat our common enemy is a moral booster that only you can provide. Those are all active in the media, particularly social media. Do not talk down or ridicule the great efforts that our troops are making to protect and defend our country, even at the risk of their lives. South African authorities have seized $9.3 million cash in transit from Nigeria. The money was seized from two Nigerians and an Israeli who were traveling in a private jet at Lanseria Airport on the outskirts of Johannesburg. A policeman uh, said the plane took off from Abuja, but the occupants did not declare the amount, which was above the authorized limit. The seized money, which is an unused $100 bills, has been deposited at the South African Central Bank. You're watching Court TV News on the hour. More stories coming up shortly after this break. Don't go away. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Welcome back. Contrary to the provisions of the Nigerian electoral law, which stipulates that election campaigns should commence 90 days to the date of polls, major political parties have continued to hold rallies in different parts of the country. On the other hand, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has continued to feign ignorance of the infraction which has precipitated tension on, on the polity. Olaju Makalatini looks at the position of the law in the support. Section 99, subsection 1 of the Electoral Act 2010, as amended, stipulates, for the purpose of this act, the period of campaigning in public by every political party shall commence 90 days before polling day and end 24 hours prior to that day. This law was designed to ensure that elected office holders who are still in office but with plans to return to office will not fritter away the official time campaigning to be re-elected. The draftsmen of the Act were no doubt aware that electioneering campaign in Nigeria is always a big deal, affecting every facet of national life. Once it starts, electioneering campaigns in Nigeria is time-consuming and have the capacity to keep everything else at bay. But there have been disagreements as to what exactly a political campaign is. The largely subjective and varied definitions of political campaigns have been maximally exploited by the politicians. The sad thing about the entire uh, process is the, is the silence of INEC, uh, who has the constitutional right uh, to punish any offender or even to make a pronouncement asking them to stop the campaign uh, before the, the, the whistle is blown. Uh, and that silence you know, uh, portends grave danger to the electoral process in 2015. Because this umpire must be seen to be independent, must be seen to 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 use the sledgehammer in in the face of uh, breaches that are being committed all over the place by politicians. The next 
general elections in the country have been scheduled for early next year and the February 14 and 28, 2015 dates set for the general elections. Campaigns are not supposed to start until October. The major political parties, particularly the ruling People's Democratic Party and the opposition All Progressive Congress, have wantonly breached the said provisions of the Electoral Act. It is actually a sabotage of the law of the land and it is a way by which our leaders become lawless. I mean, to show to the world that they are really not uh, the kind of leaders that the world over you know, think that they are. They are lawless. They disobey their own laws. Hypocrisy is, uh, uh, is superlative at the, uh, at the side of the government and the, the, the tendency to, to be lawless is being displayed by that you know, uh, exhibition of lawlessness. The law about 90 days uh, uh, with a ban on campaign until 90 days to election is not it's not it's not explicit for example that law needs to specify what constitutes a campaign if i put my name on a poster and say 2015 year i come will that constitute campaign in the face of the law so we need to take a second look at that law and spell out in clear details what constitutes a campaign 90 days before election so Somebody will, so if, you, if, if INEC tries to convict somebody now, it, that person may just have, you just say that, look, I am only advertising myself. I have not said I'm contesting for any election. Electioneering campaigns are limited to a period within which a political party has an opportunity to sell itself or to tell the electorate how far it has met its electoral premises and to converse for the votes of the electorate. On Lanchumoke, on Latsuji, Court TV News, Lagos. A spokesman of the Lagos chapter of the People's Democratic Party, Taufi Ganiu, has assured the Lagosians will get a free, fair and credible primaries in the course of choosing the party's governorship candidate. The primaries will produce the party's flag bearer in the 2015 governorship election. Lagosians uh, should be expecting uh, the best material to be their governor from PDP. For us in PDP, we are expecting that the process will be free, fair, and credible enough so that at the end of the day, losers will see themselves as actual losers. The winner will see himself as lucky to have won, and everybody will be able to work uh, together. And ahead of the 2015 general elections, Nigerian youths have been advised not to allow themselves to be used as political thugs by politicians during the electioneering process. A youth group advocates for Collective Transformation Act said it's time for youth to take up the decisive role in nation building. At the inauguration of the Ocean State Chapter of the Advocates for Collective Transformation in Oshogo, the state capital, the group says that one of its primary aims is to ensure that the best candidates occupy political offices through electoral Program. process. The youth today, under the platform of ACT, have come together to make sure that we put the right candidates in government offices, people that will do well by the people, for the people, and will make the necessary change. If truly, like I keep on saying, the youth are the future of this country, our leaders should please start involving the youth. How do we learn if you're not carried along? If they want delegate for any primaries or any, any, any general election, they should please give some quarter to the youth so that we start learning how to take over from there. Youths in all levels of governance and also support masses-based governments. It therefore wants Nigerian leaders to start giving the youth the needed encouragement and training for leadership positions. The Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria has vowed to unravel the immediate and remote causes of the collapse of the six-story building belonging to the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Ekotun, Lagos. The Council, in a statement issued in Abuja and signed by its president, Kasim Ali, says he had mobilized its team of engineering 
uh, regulation monitoring inspectors to visit the site of the collapsed building. It says while preliminary report of the visit had been received and is being processed, a more detailed investigation is ongoing. Uh, while the statement commended the Lagos state government for the prompt action taken to rescue some of those trapped in the rubbers, it says the institute will continue to partner with the government to minimize the incidence of collapsed building in Nigeria. It also urged the public to always engage qualified professionals in the execution of the construction projects. The United Nations is keen on promoting new energy sources in Nigeria to check the high rate of premature deaths on the continent. Special Representative of the UN Secretary General on Sustainable Energy, Kande Yukela, discussed this in Abuja. The UN envoy was guest speaker at the Bamanga Tukor International Lecture Series. Nigeria is a significant part of that energy poverty, but there's another statistic that is even more frightening. Still in Africa, about 80% of our people rely on firewood and charcoal for their primary energy needs, particularly cooking. That is also result, is resulting in almost 800,000 premature deaths every year. 800,000 premature deaths. Cancer, premature pneumonia. So a lot of problems for the women and children. Energy because it's the greatest thing in Nigeria now we are looking for. Always asking President Jonathan, when are we going to have this? What up? Electricity. Good. So is that energy? So we need energy security. The Nigeria Medical Association has accepted federal government's decision on the September 22 resumption date for schools across the country. It, however, wants the relevant authorities to step up surveillance at airports and other points of entry. NMA specifically wants attention paid to recent travelers to Ebola endemic countries. NMA President Kaede Obembe says after a meeting with government officials that it was necessary to take proactive steps to ensure that Nigeria keeps Ebola out of its shores. ECOWAS Commission is seeking multilateral support for health facilities and research to check the Ebola virus disease in West Africa. It also wants its international partners to commit funds to the Regional Solidarity Fund to fight the disease. President of the Commission, Kadri Waderko, made the appeal at the opening of the 10th Annual Coordination Meeting of ECOWAS and its development partners in Abuja. ECOWAS also welcomed the coordinated approach adopted by the World Health Organization but warned against taking steps that would affect free movement in the region their borders, not to isolate the affected countries because this will be counterproductive and we should cultivate the spirit of solidarity. We should open the border but be very cautious in terms of surveillance and the ministers of health have indeed made the recommendation that we have disseminated to all member states on measures to be taken by every ECOWAS member states in order to control the epidemic to control the passengers at the exit point and at the entry point to avoid contamination. And also they have proposed the creation of humanitarian corridors, which we are now implementing. That is to open up all affected countries to regular economic trade flow. And uh, we are working with all ECOWAS member states to establish these corridors, that is for each country there should be a designated land entry point, air entry point, and maritime entry point. We'll take another break now and return with Spot Stories. Stay with us. Glad to have you join us in another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. He gave me 20 minutes to move or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before it very comes. The PDP as a rule of party has failed. So anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of our own state and cause havoc is deceiving himself. 
the good, bad, ugly, and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9.15 p.m. on 40 News. Glad to have you back. Manchester United manager Lise Van Gaal says his ambition is to bring back the Premier League title to Ultra Ford. United thrashed promoted QPR 4-0 at Ultra Ford on Sunday to give the Dutchman his first win since taking over in the summer. Van Gaal, who won domestic titles in his first seasons in charge of both Barcelona and, Maya, and Bayern Munich, has been set a target of a top three finish by Chief Executive Ed Woodward. After scoring only twice in the first four games under the Van Gaal, uh, under his administration, Manchester United produced a much improved display against QPR. The victory featured Angel Di Maria and Ander Herrera's first goals for the club, while when running and Juan Mata also scored. De Maria had a hand on three goals as well as getting on the score sheet, although he was not immune from criticism from Van Gaal, who believes there is more to come from his side. And La Liga Real Madrid coach Carlo Ancelotti says he wouldn't swap his court for any other in Europe as the Los Blanco prepared to begin the defense of the Champions League against Basel on Tuesday. Madrid have suffered a horror start to the new season as they already trailed Barcelona by six points in, a, in La Liga, having lost at Real Sociedad and at home to La Liga champions Atletico Madrid in a repeat of the Champions League, uh, the Champions League final on Saturday. However, despite selling two key players in last season's triumph, Angel de Maria and Xabi Alonso, towards the end of the transfer window, Ancelotti believes he has the talent at his disposal to become the first side to retain the trophy in the Champions League era. That wraps it. They saw in court TV news. Thanks for being there. I'm Nifemi. Welcome to it.